Hi, everybody, and welcome back to TV for Real, where reality and scripted TV collide. My name is Mike Bloom. I am joined, as always, by Sasha Joseph. Hey, Sasha. Hello. We. I'm so excited. Listen, it's going to be a spooky time today. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I am wearing, you know, uh, my best spooky formal regalia, I suppose. I feel like that should be like an aesthetic for a party instead of business <laughs> casual is like spooky formal. But let me formally introduce our guest here. He is a passionate person of not only all things horror, but really television and movies in general. Very excited to welcome to TV for Real, the winner of Big Brother 15, the one, the only Andy Heron. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's nice to not talk about Big Brother for a change. <laughs> Um, I'm also wearing my, I, so nobody ever talks about Gail Weathers in the final, like best final girl conversation, but I'm sorry. I absolutely think she should be in there. Um, she is my favorite movie character of all time. Wow. So Interesting. Okay. So yeah, let's, let's just get into this. Thing yeah. Because, like for those that are, that are of the uninitiated, I mean, first off, if you're not following any on social media, what are, what are you doing with your life? But you are. An avowed fan of the Scream franchise. Yes, I am. And, it's my and, favorite. It's my favorite movie franchise. So, what? What? Like, when did it start for you? Were you like a day one adoptee? Did so, you fall in line with one of the sequels? So, I was seven. Hold on. Yeah. Wait. No. Okay. I was born. I was nine. Okay. I was nine when Scream One came out. And I remember I read. My parents did not monitor what I watched whatsoever as a child, which like. I think it was a little not great, but also I think it was mostly great because it made me like exposed to the world at like an early mm -hmm. age, if that makes sense. And I turned out relatively normal, but so I was like nine, I rented Scream 1 and I remember my grandma was living with us at the time and our living room like backed up into our kitchen, which like it was like open kind of, you know what I'm saying? If you were yeah, in the yeah. kitchen, you could see in the living room. So I put on Scream and I'm like sitting directly in front of the TV on the carpet watching it. And my grandma was like sitting in the kitchen and as the movie played, I kept like backing up and backing up and backing up to the point where I was like just sitting with my grandma in the kitchen watching Scream on the TV in the living room. It scared me so much. Uh, also, like it scared me so much in a good way. It like mm -hmm. made me fall in love with horror movies, which I didn't really, they weren't really on my radar at that point. Um, and so then one year later, Scream 2 came out and I was 10 and my dad actually did take me to see it in the theater. Ooh. And so I've seen every Scream movie. I'm like, I hope I don't talk. I, you can just tell me to shut up whenever. I No, never, this is never. all about you. So I've seen every Scream movie in the theater post Scream 2. And the only other really notable one, when I was in, uh, it was my final week of grad school in 2011 when Scream 4 was coming out. Mm -hmm. And my grad program culminated not in a thesis, but in something called comprehensive exams, which was where... Like all of my classes throughout grad school, I was put in a room for like 10 hours and I had to like answer, a, like for each class I took, I had to like write out a one, like I had like an hour to mm. write out like a multi-paragraph answer to an essay question Ooh. that was given to me by my professors, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the problem was that my comprehensive exams, it was a two day period. So like five questions one day, five another. It overlapped with, or it was like the Wednesday and Thursday before Scream 4 was opening that Friday. Mm -hmm. And so truly all I cared about was Scream 4. I've never been more excited for a movie to open in my life. And my comprehensive exams, you either got a high pass, a pass, or a low pass, or a fail. But like, nobody failed them. And so I was like a good student, but I just didn't care because I was way too focused on Scream 4. And so basically, long story short, I got all low passes on like all of my questions. And my professors were like, what happened? Like, you're normally a lot better than this. And I was just like, I have to be honest with you. I truly just did not care about this. Like Scream 4 is opening this weekend. I care about that much more. Um, and then now with 5 and 6, I've had like 30 friends come with me to the theater for each wow. one. Wow. They, like to, they like to like watch me watch them. And actually fun reality TV crossover detox from RuPaul's Drag Race is like my good friend and comes to the Scream movies. And so I have watched Scream 5 and 6 sitting next to detox. Um, yeah. Wow. I mean, yes. uh, if detox is coming at you with the slow verse, but Scream is coming at you with the reprises. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, so what was it about Scream? Was this like your first exposure to horror movies or had I mean, you watched others at like inappropriate ages? Yeah, I had seen things here and there, but it was, it was my first concrete memory of like really loving a horror movie. 
Um, and then over the course of that next year, I feel like I went back and I watched like all the classics, like Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th. Mm. Although Friday the 13th is by far my least favorite. But I caught up. And then ever since I have been like an avid, I love, love, love horror movies. It's my favorite. Horror movies and romantic comedies are my two favorite genres. Ooh, okay. And they're really rough ones to love because for every good one, there are like five bad ones. But I also feel like horror is getting a lot better. Like there aren't as many terrible horror movies coming out anymore. And I really mm. appreciate that. Um, but yes, Scream 1 was my for first foray into loving horror. Yeah. So were you, like, growing up, Andy, I feel like I really relate to what you're saying because I we used to cry to watch these, like, really scary shows because um, a lot of stuff maybe was censored growing up. I grew up in India, so uh, it, media was censored not even by my family, just culture-wise. Anyway, but boy, if you add a scary movie uh, or a scary anything, I was sad. There was yeah. a show called Aha, which means like a, a sound that you hear. Like that's what it translates to, an approaching sound. And it was a show that came on daily from 95 to 2015-ish. And boy, oh yeah. And when I tell y'all, I used to cry to watch the show. And I was like three years old. Oh. <laughs> being like, I need to watch Aha. And to this day, my mom's like, but why are you scared of movies now? When, when you were little, this is like, all you'd want to watch no so that's the one thing i don't i don't get scared it's like yeah. I, wow. I, actually, I actually love I when a movie actually scares me because really? it happens so rarely like i'm the type of person where i will put on a horror movie like to fall asleep like i will like drift off while someone's getting their head chopped off and i like don't think anything of it um and so that's why like i really 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 admire when a scary movie actually gets under my skin because it happens so rarely that's yeah fair. so then are there that really get under yeah, your skin definitely. like what's the list of the exclusives i mean like i'm trying to so the rain was the scared the, was the most scared i've ever been in the movie theater i when i was i was younger and i've since rewatched it and i don't think it's as scary mm -hmm. but i was very scared in the theater when i saw that one um, the remake of The Hills Have Eyes in 2006, I thought was very brutal. Yes. And like, that one was one where I was just like, oh boy, this is making me feel awful. But like, in a kind of a good way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, most recently, I actually was scared at Smile 2. And like, that never happens. And so I've been like recommending it to everyone. It's just like, you, it's like the type of scared where you know there's a jump scare coming but they really, really, really prolong it. And so you're just totally on edge. And I love that. Oh, um, uh, that is just oh. one of the like most uncomfortable things yes, I can ever think of doing. Like, I would rather, it. so that's the thing you can, you can absolutely live that. And I respect, I have yeah. so yeah. much respect for the people that enjoy it to say it's not my bag would be an understatement. Like, I think I just sure. live in a constant state of anxiety that I think for me, it's like, I don't want to like willingly immerse myself in this, you know, but, 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 but I'm a curious mf -er, And so I will peruse all Wikipedia pages for all horror movies and look up exactly what's going on. Cause I'm genuinely curious. Yes. About, like, like I looked up smile the other day and I even looked up pictures of the freaky demon when he actually yeah. does like make himself visible towards the end of the first movie. But I am more than happy to join from many, many arms like okay. Yes. <laughs> no, one of my, I have a couple, two of my best friends are babies and like are very, very scared of us. Babies. Yeah. And one of my favorite things to do to the two of them is if they will allow me to, I will be like, oh my God, can I, can I describe a scene to you? And so the best, the, uh, the Terrifier movies, I don't know if you've mm -hmm. heard of these, they are like insanely, they're like, unrated because they're so gory there's no way they would ever get an r rating they're so over the top gory and so i will explain scenes that happen in them to these two friends in particular and one of my friends was like i feel like i'm gonna faint like when i was telling about it <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so then i have to ask the both of you um uh, you know do you have a specific kind of horror that you like like and you talked about right like going to bed and maybe even being okay yeah. with uh, gore i think for me personally like gore is where i just i cannot but a good psychological thriller sure. i'm there then i'm i'm with you and then i said okay let's do it like split i mm -hmm. was so 
scared. I was shaking in the movie theater. But as soon as it was over, I was like, that was a good movie. And I left it, you know, sure. it's like it didn't come home with me. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I'm into. I'm, I, yeah, body horror is also a no go for me. I think. Yeah. Well, I think to your point, Andy, like if it's just like cartoonishly violent, yes. it's fine because it's more desensitized. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the more like realistic it gets, the more just like m m makes me not even interested in what's happening. That's all I can think about. I guess like these aren't. I don't know. It's it's tough to call them horror movies, but for me, like I am good for a slasher. Yeah, like, I'm oh, especially yeah. a classic one like yeah. Scream is a great example, but even like the original Nightmare on Elm Street, like maybe it's just looking at it through the lens of like 40 years later when it's like, oh yeah, there's there's some like fun hokey effects here. Yeah. You can sort of see the wires behind the scenes, but like there's enough of a plot and a sense of dread without like what it is really for me is like sometimes I know Andy, you talk about those jump scares and the prolonging of them, but like sometimes they're so cheap. Sometimes it really <laughs> is just like, well, we haven't yes. done anything for a while. What? No, I, to I totally agree with you. And that's why I love Smile 2 because a Smile 2 is filled with them and they feel earned, which I mm, thought was fair. Okay. Chef's kiss. I loved it. Um, but like for me, I mean, like, I feel like if I lived in like a house in the suburbs, I think I would be more afraid of like home invasion stuff. Yes. But, like, I live on the 29th floor of a giant high rise. And so like, I'm not very scared of that. If that makes sense. Like, no, yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. Like, yeah. Once I, once I started like moving out to the suburbs, I was looking up the plot of funny games and I'm like, Oh, yes. oh no. Oh funny, no. Funny games is another good one that makes you feel horrible. Well, you like, I mean, actually this is, this is an interesting funny games. I would say is the most people I have ever seen walk out of a theater. I would say half the theater Ooh. left. Um, and I'm not sure how much you know about funny games, but funny games, like the whole thesis of the movie is like from the director is you paid to see this. Like, I'm going to make it as miserable on you as possible. Like it's yeah. a big F you to the audience. And so like, I mean, spoiler alert for anyone that, I mean, the movie has been out for 20 years, but like at one point, the main character, it's like, it's about these two guys that show up at the vacation house of a family and just like torture them and kill them. Yeah, And at one point, the wife picks up a gun and shoots one of the bad guys. And you're like, oh, perfect. Okay, good. The movie rewinds and he takes the gun away from her. Oh, he hell no. It. It's that type of a movie. And so I, I respect what it does. But also, like, I understood when people were getting really mad. Well, because it's, it's not fun to watch. But as, like, a piece of art, I can respect it. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, especially nowadays, too. But, like... It, it does feel like, you know, we're bringing new people in who are creating these things that have been raised on things like Scream. And Scream itself was incredibly meta, right? You have a character like Randy just outlining, hey, yes. these are how all horror movies work. And so mm -hmm. what I've been so mystified, again, from many, many paces away, is like how the genre sort of reinvents itself and, and uses, you know, it to communicate messages as well. Yeah. Something like, uh, what was it called? I saw the TV glow is like uh, this huge allegory about, you know, the trans experience. Yeah. My and favorite movie of the year. Really? Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Talk to me more about that. Yeah. I mean, I just, it's, it hits a lot of notes that I think are really interesting that we haven't seen before. I don't want to say too much about it because I do think it's the type of movie that I think you should just go into and experience. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think that it is like beautifully shot really interesting story great visuals i just think it is like the whole package and i love a movie that like doesn't give you super clear-cut answers and lets you like kind of interpret it how you want yeah. i also think it kind of it perfectly nails this like niche part of like my growing up which is like buffy the vampire slayer are you afraid of the dark like nickelodeon late at night like that kind of show and you have i haven't really seen that in a movie before like mm. portrayed this accurately like the love for that um, it's a great movie. Like I said, I cannot recommend it enough. Oh, no, that that's I just watched Speak No Evil. Um, and again, like not great, but I went and um read just like Mike the plot of the original. Yes, um, which and is I much worse. Yeah, and I said, Oh, see, I'm so glad Americans <laughs> cannot handle this. Uh, I was, neither could I. <laughs> I was wondering when I went into that one, I was like are they going to go there? And I was like, here's the thing. I'm like, they didn't, but also mm -hmm. like, I didn't mind that they did it. I liked what they did with like the, I, they made it their own thing. And like I said, I was like, I don't think they're going to go there. Um, that was an interesting day. I did a double feature that day of that movie mm -hmm. and a movie called Red Rooms, which is one of my favorite movies of the year. 
It's a French Canadian movie about this woman who's like a model who like you think just like really has all her shit together. And she is obsessed with the serial killer who on the dark web, like tortured and murdered three teenage girls, like with an audience watching. And so she becomes obsessed with the serial killer and she goes to his trial and is like, her life just becomes consumed with the case. And it's like, yet again, I don't want to say much more. It, yeah. it takes, it's very dark. Um, but like watching both of those back to back, my friends were like, yet again, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> great. Typical day for me. Yeah, that's, oh. so, that's so interesting. So yeah, you are, uh, I mean, you're a big like movie theater person, right? Yes. You're a big to yes. someone to always go to the theaters over just, oh, wait for it to come out on it streaming. It is going to the movies, even before Scream and everything, as a little kid, it has always been my literal favorite thing to do in the world. And so I always say it's like a great favorite thing to have because every week there's, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. every week I'm excited about at least like one or two new movies. And so I feel like I always have something to look forward to. Um, but yes, I absolutely love it. I am a proud AMC A-list member, three movies a week, $25 <laughs> a month. It's amazing. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever do movie pass? Oh, well, of course I did. I, I, think I, I feel yeah. like I feel like I kind of am part of the reason movie pass went under. I really I'm not I am no, because I, I lived in San Francisco yeah. and I was doing all this. <laughs> no, so I'm I getting these movies for like, I fully exploited it. Movies for this. Oh my god, it's so good. Yes. Like I would so the thing is for a while while they were working out the kinks, if you like had the loyalty program for certain theaters, because you could do it with like any theater, mm -hmm. but it would also register through movie pass that you bought a ticket. And you would get like reward points. And so with Movie Pass, you could you could see a movie every day. But even if I wasn't seeing a movie every day, if I was just like walking past a movie theater, I would check in for a movie and get a ticket. And then I would get like reward points for that theater. And so not only was I checking in for a movie every day on Movie Pass, I was getting like hundreds of dollars in rewards. Oh for the my God. And it's just like I like I was fully exploiting it, um, but. I love this for us. Honestly, <laughs> capitalism. Take that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing is that like, luckily AMC A-list is able to step through. And it really is, I think, just like any subscription service, like you sort of get what you pay for. Like yes. if you are committed to going seeing as many movies as you did, then like it's absolutely worth it. If you're right. just subscribing to get like a big tub of popcorn, then it seems yes. uh, much less, you know, worth the, the price attached to you it. You can Uber Eats popcorn now, y'all. So Really? Yeah. Oh, At least here. <laughs> okay. Where do you live? Um, I live in Oakland okay. or in the Bay Area. So, okay. You know, we'd be extra here. That's wild. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Because um, no, it definitely has AMC, uh, or is it AMC or cinema? Whatever, one of them. I'm um, sure. I like yeah. it would not shock me if you could do it through AMC. Mm -hmm. But either but, way, one of them because them pretzel bites. I I, mean. Wait, AMC actually does have great pretzel bites. Yes. Yeah, so, exactly. um, I'm also sorry. I'm like, like, so my building can only have the heat on or the cooling on, and like they switched from cooling to heating, but we're having like a heat wave here. And so I can't have my AC on to my apartment. It's like, I'm like boring sweat as I'm talking to you. Both. No, listen, you're just, um, it's just your passion for the yes, genre. Yes. Everything. It's, it's awesome. a of my apartment being hot and me talking passionately, but I'm like, I look crazy. I'm so sweaty. No, um, never. Well, so I'm intrigued because with a lot of people, as the Halloween season arrives, they like go through their stock list of movies that they like to rewatch every year. Is that the case with you? Because you also seem to be someone who's also exploring as much new stuff yeah. as possible. Um, it, yes, it's a combo of both. I definitely have like staples that I like to watch. Like I would say non-scream Candyman is my favorite horror movie. And so I will watch that like every Halloween. I think it's the best Chicago movie ever made. <laughs> um, I'm serious. It's like it is Chicago is like a character in the movie. It is so good. Huh. Um, and like, if you read about the history of Candyman, there are like certain things that happen in it that are based off of like actual Chicago history. Um, it's so interesting. Um, so I watch that one every year. And then if there are like recent ones that I really like, I'll try to like, I, I love Barbarian from a couple years ago. So I've mm -hmm. rewatched that in the last couple years. I loved Watcher from a couple years ago, which is a lesser known one. It's about this American actress who moves to Bucharest with her husband and she's just like bored all day and not working while he's at work. Oh, and cool. there's a serial killer on the loose killing women and decapitating them. And all of a sudden one night in like her gorgeous apartment with giant windows, she sees a man across the way staring at her. 
And she's just like, what if that's the serial killer? And that's like the whole premise of the movie. Um, very simple, but like very well done. Uh, that's one of my favorites that not a lot of people know about. Um, and then of course the classics. I love A Nightmare on Elm Street as well. So I'll like usually watch that one, Halloween. Yeah. What do about you? you? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. What, no, say, go ahead. What about you, Sasha? Like, do you have, obviously, again, scary movies are not exactly in our wheelhouse, but like any Halloween type stuff that you I usually know, put I, on this time of year? I think I love a Disney Halloween. Like, a Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween is my vibe, if you know what I mean. No, but so I have been being like Sasha, like, grow up. We got to watch a few. So, like I said, I think Split really is something that encapsulates a lot. And y'all, like, read a lot of horror weirdly okay. enough so i'm okay um and i like i feel like when you were talking andy i was like yeah because i'm into weird shit when i read because karen slaughter's books i don't know if y'all know who karen slaughter karen is. slaughter's yes karen slaughter um she is a like horror but it's like gory also like all of it that, okay. that it, and she comes up with the most effed up shit y'all like i don't know how else to tell you is I'm, I'm not trying to like ruin if people are watching so i won't give any names but she's like usually in the south or like in atlanta so again i just i love everything south i'm from oklahoma and then she does this like horrible twist that just like is the biggest gut punch and you're like i thought this man was normal turns out he's like a horrible rapist killer um yeah okay. and, like, i'm gonna remember and that. there's always something like that happens so i really enjoy like those kinds of books but then as mike yeah living in suburbia um then i can't sleep because i read i'll be gone in the dark um, which is the Golden State Killers oh. book. Don't do it. <laughs> Just don't. Well, um, there has not been a day that have, I have not checked every single window in my house okay. before I go to bed. Going off of I'm how yes. I'm never scared, I listened to a podcast. I can't remember the name of it, mm -hmm. but I listened to a podcast about the Golden State Killer, and they played a recording oh. of like when he would call that woman over and over yes, and he would recording like, of it. So and it genuinely scared me. Like I remember I was like in my apartment that night, like, oh, I am scared. <laughs> yeah. You're like, mm, it got me because yes, it's real. Yes. <laughs> yeah, what? like for him specifically, I don't know. Um, is it feels like when it gets real and when it's so close and again living in the bay area what's what's going on in the water here it's really? too many of them around here but i'm just like the way like how specific it is i can't it stresses me out yeah it stresses me out. yeah so I, I was intrigued about that andy because like some people might feel like a uh, horror movies is a pipeline to like the true crime side of things. Are you a fan of more real life horrors as well? Or do you keep it purely fictional? No, I am a fan of real life horror too. Like oh, I, okay. I'm very, I'm very well versed in serial killers. Like <laughs> now my bag. Now I'm here. <laughs> um, yes, I, I do like true crime. I wouldn't say, I think that, like, I'm about to sound so annoying, but it's like, I feel like I liked true crime before it became like such a thing. And now I feel like yeah. it's, it's it's oversaturated. Like, I feel like mm -hmm. there's a lot of like crap that you, that you have to weed through. But when you can find something good, true crime, I'm very in. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think that you're right. The oversaturation of this stuff. I think I have almost not walked away from it, but walked yeah. away from it in that, like, if there's an interesting podcast that I enjoy, I'll listen to it. But yeah, I'm, I don't seek it out. You're right as yeah. much anymore. Like the Zodiac, together. the Zodiac is my favorite. That's like such a, that's a, such a dark, weird thing to say. <laughs> it's okay. it's like Zodiac there's a whole podcast it, on Zodiac my favorite. Zodiac is my murder. favorite serial killer. Yeah. And like, but it's like, there's been so much content about the Zodiac. That there, apparently there's a new Netflix show and it's like, you would think that I would be like clamoring to watch it. But a part mm -hmm. of me is like, I already know it all. Um, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. No, I, I'm so with you on that. Well, what? Cause then do they also like find out new information about the Zodiac killer? Yeah, because of I also, I I think the Zodiac was Arthur Lee Allen. Yeah. It, apparently the Netflix show, the main thesis of the Netflix show is the Zodiac was Arthur Lee Allen. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we we get it. Yes, we yes. all did. We all Googled it. We all figured it out at this point. Why do we need to throw money and effort behind it? Right. Yeah, I just 
I'm also fascinated, I think, by all of this stuff because it, um, I know people that live in the, these certain towns in the Bay Area, uh, in the Bay Area specifically, where they like have had encounters. And we don't know which one it was um, because there could have been a few. But folks like being like, no, I remember the Roswell Police Department really did suck. And um, we really had no idea on, you know, how or why. And it makes sense why these serial killers would just be vibing out and hanging out here. Right. I don't know. I mean, the one thing that is nice is now I feel like it's harder to be a serial killer. Like it was a lot easier back then. Um, But no, it's, it's funny. I'm like. Thinking back, the one I was in, like, the, I'm, this is going to make me sound so crazy. When I was in San Francisco last, I actually went one night, like, I had a flight get canceled, and so I had an extra night there. And I was like, what should I do with my night? And so I literally walked to Presidio Heights to, like, the corner of Washington and Cherry, where, oh, the, Zodiac, yeah. where the Zodiac killed Paul Stein. Mm-hmm. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I just want to see. You know, um, the local haunts. You were going exactly. on your own I tour. wanted to see a local haunt. And so, so to answer your question, yes, I do care about true crime. Um, but I do I do think it's a little oversaturated. Yeah. yeah. That's the that's the thing is I don't know if it's just that, like, the world has felt scarier as well. That yes. for me, at least it feels less like, oh, yes, when there are very major crimes being committed on the national stage. I don't know if I need to necessarily find out more about, like, Oh, what's happening to all of these suburban mothers in right. the middle of North Carolina? <laughs> like, it's not exactly an escape from that reality. But to your point earlier about like, yeah, I guess nowadays serial killers, it's a, uh, it's a, it's probably tough sledding for them just because you can't exactly, you know, go around. Uh, people don't hitchhike right. anymore. Nobody goes anywhere without their phone. So like, you have to dispose of that right. somehow. It feels like a bunch of extra steps to get done something that could be done more easily thirty years ago. Yeah. yeah. Listen, unless you're a black or indigenous woman, especially or a like young girl, because what's going? Why are they constantly getting kidnapped or going missing? So, but yeah, I know I'm I'm so with you, Mike. Because again, when you see like, oh, DNA fixed the the, the case and yeah. DNA got this, that, you're like, oh, it was just that easy. Well, thank God I was born in this decade, I guess. Um, yeah. I mean, the it, other the the other side of it though yeah. is like. Uh, <laughs> Oh, so and so was the one behind this when it turns out to be like an AI deep fake, you know? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> That's it. Oh my God. Um, Andy, you brought this up at the start, and I, I didn't want to be like, oh, now tell me everything about it. But you um spoke about, you know, final girls, right? And your favorite list. Yeah. So I'd love to dig more deep into this because I, I don't know that folks talk about this a lot. Um, when we t- talk about consuming horror films. So, you know, first the most basic version, I'd love to hear, you know, do you have a favorite like horror, um, like it, it, pr- antagonist? Is that the best way mm-hmm. to say it? Okay, so yes. I, so yeah. Gail from Scream and Sydney yeah. from Scream. I love them. I think they both complement each other so mm-hmm. well. Um, I love them. But this is actually kind of fun and it ties into like the reality world. I bet mm-hmm. you probably know this. But Sharni Vinson, who was on Australian Survivor, was the lead in a horror movie called You're Next. Yes, yes, and yes, yes. I think she in that movie is like the whole prep. The movie is so fun because basically... She is the girlfriend. She's like dating a guy and they're going to his parents' house in the country and none of his family knows her. And he's like bringing her with him. And basically like these masked intruders show up at the house and start killing everybody. And they don't realize that Sharni Vincent's character is Australian and grew up in like an Australian survivalist compound. And so the the movie takes like a twist and she just starts beating the shit out of like all the bad guys. Period. It's amazing. Like, once you realize that she's got all these powers, it's like, oh, you know she's not going to die. And the movie just becomes like a comedy where she just, like, truly beats the shit out of all the bad people. Oh, I love it. That's why it was, like, it's funny because when she was on Australian Survivor, she was so, like, nothing. Like, Yeah. Yeah. And it's, like, it was disappointing because her character in Your Next is, like, what I think is the most, the best single one-time final girl in horror movie history. Okay. Yes. Um, it's real. It's a really fun movie if you've never seen it. And like I said, it was so crazy when she was on Survivor and just like did not act like that at all. And I was like, okay, so she's a good actress. Like, she yeah, that's that. not a great Survivor player, but a great actress. Yes. Okay, I loved it. Oh my god. Also, do you have a favorite? Yeah, like bad guy. Um. Okay, Freddy Krueger scared okay, me the most. Yes. So talk mm. about being scared. Freddy Krueger scared me the most as a kid. Mm-hmm. Like I was. 
very, very, very scared of Freddy Krueger for a while. Like before I saw Scream, I had like seen just images of Freddy Krueger at the video store. And it like scared me so much that my parents had to like sit me down and like tell me who Robert England. They were like, Freddy oh. Krueger is played by an actor named Robert England. <laughs> like he is not real, but I still was just like, I'm six. <laughs> like I'm scared of this. Um, and so I was, I was so scared of him that I could not even walk by like the boxes for Nightmare on Elm Street movies at the video store. And so I think because of that, he will like always be my favorite because I found him the scariest. Yeah. And I do think when he's not like in the movies where he in, pretty much in one and seven, like Nightmare on Elm Street one and Nightmare on Elm Street seven, those are the only times that he's actually scary and not just like cracking jokes. Mm -hmm. But when he is scary, I think that he's like genuinely the scariest of all of them. Mm. Um, and I mean, a lot of them, like, I don't think Michael Myers is that scary. He just kind of walks towards you. Mm -hmm. um, he has mommy issues. Yeah. Yes. Chucky is like more funny than scary. Yeah. Well, you talk yeah. about another like wise cracker. I feel like they've especially leaned in that direction after yes. the first one. Yeah, the problem is I think I might get got by Chucky because I would be like, no, you're shorter than me. And there's not that many people shorter than me. Well, you could just play up. they just be like, no, I'm a doll like you. Like, yeah. I could, be your, I could be your Jennifer Tilly bride of Chucky. That's what I'm saying. I just, I, yeah, Chucky might get me on account that I might get too happy and be like, he's not, he can never. Let pit right. <laughs> Mind you, I'm five feet. <laughs> No, I, oh, that's really funny. Uh, I I don't know about you, Mike, but for me, also, I grew up, um, and I still remember, and this is crazy, uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose, right? Oh. And when the devil walked in church, then I say, okay, then the God can't even save me. What's the mm. point of this? Right? Like, at least when I'm scared, I could, like, I saw te Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Exorcism of Emily Rose. I somehow ended up watching them back to back. Okay. Like, um, my cousins were like, you just moved to America. These are the things you should watch. <laughs> this is quintessential American movies. Yeah. yeah. Just horrible. But anyway, until is it, if it's two o'clock and I wake up, I say, I, I cannot move. I need to yeah. just sit down here. And then last night I had this like ring doorbell notification at 2.45 a.m. And I said, what's happening? Do you know, I don't like this. And then y'all, it was a spider. So you can only imagine how creepy that looked. Just Wait, like, so it was like a spider in yeah, front of your ring? Yeah, just like oh, walking across. And I said, like, at this timing, time. Like on October 29th. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was like, no. See, so for me, yeah, like. I agree. I think what we watch when we're younger just like so sticks with us. Um, because my cousin I never watched it because my cousins were so scared okay. of it that we never watched that movie. But so to be to be fair, if you had watched the old it, it would not be yeah. no. like the mini series oh. they did. If you watch the one with Tim Curry as Pennywise, it is like so bad. It's funny. So oh. I, uh, okay, I still I saw that as a little kid. It scared that scared me as a little kid too, to be honest. Mm. Um, now I, I, I do not think it ages very well, but when I was like, when I was like five in 1992, like it, just, it definitely didn't scare me. <laughs> yeah. I I'm always intrigued when it comes to like the ideal horror watching experience. Should it be with people or no? Cause like something that certainly assuages me with horror movies. Like when I watched the ring, uh, I like had two cinephiles as former yeah. girlfriends and like they showed that to me we watched um we watched like uh human centipede together oh, like hey. through our fingers like it for me it helps to have a group so that like yeah while i do feel terror at least like i'm surrounded by a group of it but i could also imagine if you're trying to like be immersed and you have people trying to like crack jokes or not be serious around you that could also take you out of so, it okay i'm i exist in some middle plane here i of course don't want anyone talking near me mm -hmm. um yeah. like literally it's funny one of my i was like on a date with a guy who has since become like a good friend and we were like the movie was starting and he started talking to me and i like did barely knew him and i just leaned over and i was like if you don't shut up i'm gonna cut your fucking head off Jesus. and i mean he was like like i was mostly joking yes um but like he got the point um, so i don't want people talking but i do like watching it with other people and i think like watching other people's reactions is really fun and i also like being someone who's never that scared, I like watching it with people that are scared and I can like protect them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like I have, had, I have had multiple friends jump into my arms like during scary movies. I was at one- Like Shaggy and Scooby-Doo. Yeah, like <laughs> my friend Frank, who is larger than me, 
literally jumped it like got into my lap like at a movie once and he was so scared and we like get up to leave and we're walking out and i run into a girl from high school who i had who i had not seen in like 20 years and she was just like i was wondering if that was you with that large man in your lap like during the movie and i was like yep it was hey how are you um and so i like i like being like the brave protector if that makes sense because i'm never scared um, and so, but I would say my ideal viewing is with other people. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, if for me, it has to like be with only people, other people, as many people as I can. Yeah. Even when I go through haunted houses, which okay, I have not in years, but I, I'm always like, I got to be the middle person. I got to figure out how to get people on the yes. sides of me, even though you have to be in a line. Like I really, there's an art. To, to haunted houses, haunted houses and everything. Kind of do haunted. scare me. I don't love a haunted oh, house. Oh, interesting. Okay. I don't want. I don't want to be like touched. Or, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do think, especially in a post-COVID world, there's a different fear that comes in the haunted house, which is like yeah. personal <laughs> contact. <laughs> I love watching those uh, ridiculous videos of like famous people going in haunted houses yes, and being scared, agreed. but and that don't ever put me back in. I'm good. I don't know why I did that. Yeah, I think I think I've outgrown haunted houses. Like, yes. mm. like those people that that pay good money to do the Universals, right? Like Halloween horror yeah. nights. Y'all are wild. Yeah. What is the yeah. reason? I don't know. I uh, there was back in the day. Uh, I know some friends got the opportunity to like volunteer at because we were right near uh, Dorney Park. We were literally like right down the street, and so they got the opportunity to like volunteer to dress up as zombies or whatever for their like haunted nights. I feel like those are okay, fun moments. Would, I think it would be fun to do that. I, like that's. I think that would be more fun than going as like a paying customer. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I imagine actually. Well, I I would say it's a little bit of hazard pay, right? If you are an actor in a haunted house. I feel like that's so much fun, but it comes with such a cost of like directly getting punched in the face. I was gonna as say, I bet so many of them get punched. Like they have to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred. Yeah. I would definitely pushed. Listen, people. it's, it's yes. fight or flight. A hundred percent of the people are not going to do flight. There's going to yes. be at least a hefty percentage that do fight. Yes. Oh, mil and I'm the freeze guy. Okay. Yeah. So the worst one, they literally <laughs> had to during the universal, um, in LA, they just have like the haunted house. I forget which one. Uh, it's just a regular ride, ride, whatever attraction experience. And I went through it and I somehow I was the first person. And I said, no, I got to let me get to the back of the line. They wouldn't let me. And they literally, the actor had to be like, you need to move. You have to get out of this room. And I was like, I can't move. <laughs> Oh my god, my sorority for sisterhood. Um, they would we would have themes every month. So freaking October was haunted house themed. Terrible. <laughs> so wait, did you dress up the sorority house as a haunted house, or you no, went no, to a haunted no. house? Yes, we were multicultural, you know. So no houses for us. No, and living in <laughs> living in a fraternity house, I believe we did do a haunted house for that, a couple I, years to yes, like to like that the I extent that we could. It's a bunch of goofy nerds, which is like. <laughs> a, a guy put a horse head mask on and is holding a fake chainsaw at the end of the, you know, at the end of the the, the hallway going, ah, and it's like, no, not that. And I mean, listen, we were all like broke college theater That's kids theater. that are like, well, we could, tr we don't have much, but we'll try to make something happen. It's like the perverted version of those Ricky Mickey Rooney movies of like, let's put on a show, everybody. We've only got two pennies to rub together, but we could scare the pants off these kids. <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh, Andy, do you think there's like a concept that hasn't been done or that you just, you know, ask someone that, that, you know, is the Britannica encyclopedia of this? Um, do you think there's like something you want to see that you haven't seen? Maybe I'll it does exist. You haven't be honest, seen I don't really think about mm -hmm. that. Like, I actually really yeah. don't have an answer for that. Yeah. Um, I usually like, I will like read, like, it'll be like, oh, this upcoming movie is in development and here's the premise. And I'll be like, oh, that is so cool. How has no one thought of that? But yeah. I myself don't ever, I just sit wanting the information to yeah. come to me. Um, and so I just let, yeah, I let it come to me as it, as it does. But I mean, I have been pleasantly surprised with, I think horror continually like remains interesting, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I what yeah, what about from the TV perspective? Because obviously the genre existed in movies for yes. so long. And there are like 
horror-esque shows, obviously, Tales have, from the Crypt. I have a hot take. Oh, please. Um, I think that American Horror Story is one of the worst shows that has ever been on TV. Woo! I think it has never been good. I Woo! think the season, the season that you think was good, it wasn't good, honey. There has never been a good season of American Horror Story. It sucks. Even if it starts out good, halfway through it becomes bad. Like, oh, you thought Coven was good? By the end, everybody was getting revived from the dead. There were no stakes. It all falls apart. I think American Horror Story sucks. One thing about Ryan Murphy in this podcast, he's going to get laughed. I know. It felt, it felt, it felt like laughed. a while since okay. we dragged Ryan Murphy. It feels like good. Okay, but good. What I will say is, I will reprieve a little bit. I did think that Scream Queens was oh, good. I was going to ask I, you about that. Okay. Yeah, Queens I, was I, good. I, I really like Scream because it knew what it was doing. Right? Like, I watched it absolutely. Yes. And yes. listen, like uh, Glenn Powell, you know, Renaissance here, but uh, yeah. the real ones remember him as Chad Radwell from Scream and Queens. It looked uh, an amazing cast. Like that cast yes. is unreal. Um, but yes, I like Scream Queens. I think it, I I once tweeted that I thought American Horror Story sucked. And man, I got I got it all day in the comments. People think it went viral and people got mad. Um, but I stand by it. No, that's, oh my God, yeah. I think I'm about to sound elitist and annoying, but I think it is horror TV for people that hate horror. Like, I think if you don't oh. care horror, if you don't like horror, you will like American Horror uh, Story. <laughs> but I think if you actually, like, really care about the genre, I think it's terrible. Oh, okay, fair, fair. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense that, like, you know, I think it became much like a lot of Ryan Murphy properties. Like, the intentions kind of had the wheels fall off and it became more of, like, Okay, let's just start using this as a vehicle to bring in celebrities and do like yeah, creepy, grotesque like, shit. What is Kim Kardashian doing here? I'm sorry, get her out of there. Like, and it, she was a scab, which is even worse. I know. Yeah. Oh my. I just like forgot the cast of Scream Queens, even though, like I said, I watched it. It's so, no, no it's like, this is like wild. Lewis, Liam Michelle, Nassim Padrad, Emma Roberts, Abigail Palmer. Palmer. What the uh, hell? Kiki Palmer. Palmer. You see Nash. Uh, yes. Yeah, like, oh my God, Powell, it's so good. John Stamos shows up. Yeah. Oh, like the yeah. only, the only, and even the, uh, like, the two romantic leads have done the least afterwards, but they've always gone viral because of like the cringeworthy Senorita yes. awesome scene when she gets coffee from him. Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. And the guy from Emily in Paris. What the hell? Um, yep. The British guy, Lucy. <laughs> That's the thing is that Ryan Murphy like finds talent and assembles them together. But I don't know, Sasha, have you, I have not watched the new Aaron Hernandez show, but I've seen clips oh. from it and it is incredible. It uh, is yeah, amazing. Oh my so God, these, either. so these people, like it's as if they are aliens that just had like the concept <laughs> of football explained to them. Like when I tell you, and if you're not a sports person, you know uh, it's a table. But like the way they personify, like Bill Belichick and Gronk are so over the top campy. It's absolutely incredible, which is tough because like they're trying to go in the direction of like. They were telling the OJ story, you know, like they're they're not exactly going for over the top campy portrayals of these real life figures. But for some reason, when it comes to the world of sports, they decide to do it. So I only watch it through like a couple of choice clips that yeah, show up too. on my okay, on seen... my timeline. But but I do want to actually like sit down and watch it because it just looks it looks like absolute fun, but maybe for the wrong reason. I mean, maybe I would. I don't. I do, man. I truly think I could take over the world if I could talk to anyone about sports, but I just don't care. Period. So I think maybe it would be good for me. I wouldn't have any idea if it wasn't accurate in any way. So. No, that's fair. No, it's it's Aaron Hernandez. Wild, wild story. Yeah, so speaking, of, speaking of true crime, Andy, this might be a well, rare like true crime that's story right. that you don't know about. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, so. so it's funny. I literally maybe a month ago was like, what is this? I don't know what, like, I, so I asked a friend to explain it to me. So I know a like two minute Cliff right. version of, the, of what, of what happened, but that's all I know. Yeah. I, that's enough. You need to know. I just feel like the, that show Mike is like if AI, yeah. you know, like me, it wrote a script and cast the people. Cause Bill Belichick is played by someone that like be serious. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, he, come on. like he specifically like basically just took a picture of Bill Belichick and we're like, yeah, this is all, this is your character. We don't need to write you. Just come in and improvise. Like okay. this is the look that you should be embodying. Like, it's just, it's basically like a made for TV movie of yes. this story in so many ways. So 
I, I'm excited to eventually uh, check it out, but it just seems like, I don't know. I like, I was intrigued by the direction considering that Ryan Murphy and sports do not often go together in the sure. same sentence. Uh, so unfortunately maybe it's, it's not trending on the side of like great quality first seasons. Like a lot of people allege Ryan Murphy shows are. I like, I don't watch that much scripted TV anymore. Like it's mm. like, I really do like so much of my time is taken up watching reality TV, mm. uh, but I guess this is kind of horror adjacent. I'm watching Agatha all along, which is the, the, the finale is tonight. Um, and I thought, I have thought that it was quite good. So I uh, listen as a Marvel girly, but that has been disappointed by Marvel. Agatha gets it. Oh, okay. So I am not a Marvel girly and I am in like, I think I have chosen right. But you, but you are a Catherine Hahn girly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. well, I mean, mm -hmm, I, am, yes. I am a, I am a, it's actually insane. I would say I'm an Aubrey Plaza, then Patty Lupin, mm -hmm. then Catherine Hahn. It's like Catherine Hahn is my third favorite. In it's your Avengers. <laughs> um, but I don't really care about Marvel. I will see all the movies, but I don't watch any of the shows. The only shows that I've watched are WandaVision and Agatha all along. And everyone's like, You've chosen well. If yeah, you're that's to watch exactly any. what I would say. Yeah. Do not watch Secret Invasion. Ever. No, I mean you, you can watch Miss Marvel though. Miss Marvel's really good. Okay, yeah, I, you know. I, so I saw I saw the Marvels the movie and had no idea what was going on because I oh did, yeah, I, like I was just like I truly am lost. Um, and so, but I did like all of the characters in it, and so maybe I mm. would like that. Yeah, Miss Marvel, it, it feels like a sitcom more oh, yeah. than it does a, like a nice family. Yeah, it, it feels sitcom. like a like a like a teen show. Okay. Uh, at least it, it starts out, especially with a very yeah. specific tone. I mean, I think Andy, what we really need to just get you into the MCU is casting. Oh well, I was gonna say, I believe Judy Greer was part of the MCU. Judy no? Greer plays Paul Rudd's wife in the Ant Man movies. Yes. So Judy Greer <laughs> is in the MCU. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, but also speaking of like silly, funny things, because you tweeted about this too, and it's because the announcement is here. A uh, scary movie is coming back. Here. Oh my god, I know. That's I exciting. know. I am so ready. I just I have been on like a weird um Wayans brother like deep dive on YouTube. I, okay. Yeah, since uh, the Shannon Sharp interview that mm -hmm. Marlon Wayans just did, I've been like. I've always been like fascinated by their family because I think as an only child, I'm always like fascinated by large families. But and then I just learned so much about them. I'm so ready for scary uh, movies. Same. And like if you rewatch the first, I mean, I think yes. the only, scary movie one and two are like the only good ones. Yeah, but yeah, unfortunately. For every good joke, there is a joke that ages like milk. And so, but what I will say is the good jokes are so good mm -hmm. that I think one coming out now. They will know, like, you know what I'm saying? We, we are not going to get the horrible jokes that we got in 2000. And so I have high hopes for the new one. Yeah, that's the thing is that Scary Movie obviously was incredibly successful. And it spawns not only, uh, you know, subsequent Scary Movie movies that aren't even parodying horror movies at a certain point. But then it also spawns Epic Movie and which, Date Movie, mm -hmm. which are just awful because it's, not even, about, actually it's not even about lampooning the genre it's just like let's throw in as many pop right. culture references as we can which like definitely gets away from the original spirit of it i mean the lone lone exception is not another teen movie, not which, another I, teen movie. Oh, which is a work of art yeah. work I of art still, i would say like once a month i quote glasses and i'm not glasses and a ponytail anything but that like, it's <laughs> Oh my god! And that's then that's just, speaking of Marvel. That's Chris Evans. Yeah, but listen, yes. that's my that's to me the hottest Chris. Period. And I oh will yes, I, there and in that movie he's so hot, which is I, that's yeah. Like, what I'm saying. I think for us like that grew up with him in the rom com yeah. era, you don't know him like I know him. Like you, you weren't in Nanny Diaries. Yeah. Watch, you know, uh, like being like, what a hot neighbor. I totally agree. So it's just that I'm with him, but no, it's it's really interesting you say that, um, Mike, uh, about the date movie because I was like, I don't think the Wayans brothers did that, no, and did that. um, and that's no. what Marlon talks about a lot. In the um, the reason they don't want to bring a lot of stuff back is because of how production houses come in and they will like kind of ruin um what is the original and that's why it took them so long to to come up with anything um if they were to do a sequel blah 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 because listen for me i'm dying for a white chick sequel but uh, they said no they'll never do it they said no. I'm a black man fair uh but it, that's what also came for me is like how these um horror movies you know will 
will get a little bit commercialized yep. and then they lose it's like spark well and it's like what i wonder what these will parody will these parody like like the more like art house cerebral horror so like yes. hereditary and midsummer and like mm -hmm. things like that which i love um so who knows yeah because well, yeah, that's the thing is that like that has become the way that horror works nowadays that i feel like a lot of these like there are some that might become serialized but i feel like in general we're, we're sort of past like tentpole horror movies when well, you know i guess scream is still Scream's well still or yeah. or what's continuing is still continuing depending on uh the statuses oh, of their actresses it's... or not um but the, i feel like usually though a lot of the most talked about horror movies are like random one-offs that will pop yeah. up from art houses so yeah to your point it'll be interesting because also i feel like i mean i would say that maybe something like megan will show up mm, like i feel like absolutely. they're gonna go for the most viral stuff babadook is another good yeah. one. love it Oh, Megan's doing that dance. <laughs> Absolutely, Megan will be in there. Which yep. apparently we're getting a Megan sequel next year. Oh, wow. And I did watch Megan again. Another That's one that getting it not scary, but very fun. Yeah, yeah. where I was like, oh, I'm here. I'm yes. in. <laughs> I also was just looking this up. I didn't realize that uh, one of the guys that wrote Scary Movie 3 was Craig Mazin. Uh, and if you don't know, he created Chernobyl on HBO and oh. The Last of Us. Oh, Okay. Oh, wow. Creatives contain multitudes. I love that. I love this for us, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh so you know, everyone has their start somewhere. Uh, yeah. but unfortunately, we're gonna start bringing things to a close. No. Um, like everything has to start, everything has its end. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions though, Andy, that we yes. usually do on this podcast. My so <laughs> if there were for whatever reason, to be a uh, a scripted version of Big Brother fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> who, who? Yeah, I know. I if, if there's man, there are not many worse ideas than that. But... <laughs> Did someone turn on the heater in my house? Yeah, if we if they like create <laughs> Hollywood has run out of ideas. They've officially yeah. reached the bottom of the barrel. Picked the last ball out. Who Ryan you... Murphy has shown up. Yeah. <laughs> Who would you cast as yourself? I mean, like, I think the answer is pretty obvious. Like, literally, I don't, you've probably seen this. I've tweeted about it. While I was on Big Brother, Jesse Tyler Ferguson tweeted, yeah. like, oh, well, God. it's Friday, so I'm getting my usual slew of you. You look just like Andy from Big Brother 15. <laughs> like, it's like he tweeted that people were saying we looked like each other. And so I guess I have to say him. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that that makes a lot. Well, especially around that time as well. Like 2013 was like yes. modern family time as well. So it was a good time to be like an out and proud redhead on television. <laughs> oh my God. I was really wondering when, how you were going to ask this question or if you were going to ask it at all. <laughs> Why not? Come no, I, I was waiting. I want to be very out of, out of every season to choose, they choose that one. And everybody's like, what? <laughs> what is the reason? <laughs> Like it's always so funny. Like, like when friends will like friends will find out that I was on the show, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, "Well, of course I want to watch your season," and I'll just be like, "Okay, girl." But like, I usually have to just like start off with that. And now I like that there are just like two-hour videos on YouTube of my game, and I'm like, oh, just, I'm, like I'm like, I'm like, honey, just watch that. Like, that's the thing. That's that's the equivalent of me reading through the Wikipedia summaries of the horror movies. Yes. Like, I don't need to open myself up to the actual real McCoy. Let me like check out the abridged, the best parts of what I need to know about it. Yep. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Andy, this was such a pleasure. I can think yeah. of no better way to oh. get ready for spooky season. I mean, again, like whether it be uh, the temperature or your passion, like you just exude so much energy when it comes to talking about this. <laughs> no, and this you, was- it's, I'm, I'm a dork and I love talking about this stuff. So I am- thrilled to be here as you can probably tell oh my god well uh let's finish off here what is one movie so smile 2 is like your main recommendation do you have another one of like a past or present movie that people should check out within the next couple days while the holiday is still I mean, uh so, fresh yeah I mean, in theory smile 2 and the substance are both amazing they're the they're substance my two, yes they're my two favorite horror movies i i wouldn't consider us on the tv glow straight up horror so i'm saying mm -hmm. smile 2 and the substance are the two best horror movies of the year they're both in theaters. They're quite different. The substance is like goofier and sillier and Smile 2 is genuinely scary. So if you're in the mood for one or the other or both, um, I love both of those. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of discourse online about like, I don't know, are people analyzing the substance too much or do you think it is uh, 
quite literally more than skin deep in terms of what it's I going think, for. I think I honestly think that the substance is mostly supposed to just be like a goofy fun time at the movies. But I absolutely I think it is tackling very relevant topics that deserve to be discussed, but doing so in, in, in a completely absurd manner, um, if that makes sense. Like it, once you see the movie, you'll realize what I'm talking about. But it's like it it really just goes in wild, wild directions that I feel like it's a little silly to, to see people taking it incredibly seriously, if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Andy, this was such a pleasure. This was truly incredible. Thank you so much for coming on here and offering all of your expertise, your energy and so much more. Of course. I mean, you mentioned, uh, you know, the the opinions you like to put out there on social media, haters be damned. If people want to follow you and they haven't Sorry. yet, how can they do so? Um, it's just at Andy Heron on Twitter, on Instagram, on Letterboxd, which is my favorite. Um, yeah. Oh, you're, you're, you're a letter, letterbox girly? Love letterbox. Obsessed. Yeah. That's what I was looking at before this podcast. I was like, oh, let me see what Andy's got. <laughs> All right. Well, Sasha, what's going on with you besides you hounding Andy's letterbox account? <laughs> listen, we got to do our research. Absolutely. Um, but listen, speaking of research, if you want to know why something's trending, why something is exciting, what the celebrities are up to, you need to check out Mess Magnets with Kirsten McKennis and I, where we talk all of that and more. And of course, listeners submitted mess. OK, you need to go to messmagnets.com to check out all of that. And Matt Ligori and I are talking Dancing with the Stars. It's getting crazy. Um, tens for everyone, apparently. And listen, America joined us, America Lopez. So it was such a fun time. Check that out on the Rob Has a Podcast YouTube channel or the We Know Reality TV feed. Um, and for everything else I'm doing, just follow me on Twitter, funsize underscore 04. What about you, Mike? Well, I'm excited to listen to that. And also America, uh, a lot of Bachelor-centric stuff going on on Dancing with the Stars this week. So I exactly. imagine you can offer her expertise as well as like, all of the uh, simmering sexual tension that people ascribe to these partnerships as well. Uh, so you can check out all my coverage of Survivor 47. I'm covering the Penguin uh, on this network as well, which like I, again, cannot recommend more. The penultimate episode is coming up this Sunday. I'm covering Battlestar Galactica. And then, of course, TV for Real, uh, where I'm going to be gone next week, actually. I'm going to be spirited away to a metaphoric haunted house. Uh, I will return, but Sasha will be holding down yes. this haunted house of a podcast. Very excited to hear that, Sasha. Should be a good time, but you it's will be joined be by another reality contestant talking scripted TV and more. Yes. It's, it's, you want to tune in, trust me. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't wait to tune in. I hope you all do as well. So, Sasha, we'll be back with more reality TV stars talking scripted TV next week on TV for Real. Thank you all so much for listening. Andy, thank you so much again. Until thank next you. time, everybody, it's been real.